Hey there, it's CJ Willie, and I'm cracking a pack today. I'm back with pack number 31 in my 1988 Topps Mini Leaders box. I'm trying to see how many packs I have to crack to get all 77 cards in the complete set. I've included the link to the preview video in the description below, which gives a little explanation on the set and the highlights of what I could pull in cracking these packs. Since each pack only has seven cards in it, I'm going to guess the category or categories the player led their league in, and then I'll flip the card over to see if I'm right or how very bad my memory was of the 1987 MLB season. I've got my nifty checklist out and we'll check off pack number 31. I need 30 more cards to complete set number three. I've already got sets one and two. I have a possibility of 42 cards left to go, so just a little wiggle room. I can't get too many quadruplicates. I need these all to be triplicates. Anyway, let's go ahead and crack the pack and see how well I did. I can see George Bell off the back, and the good news about George Bell is he is a triplicate I need. So hopefully this is another pack of seven triplicates, and I'll be looking pretty good. All right, let's get rid of Spring Fever Baseball and take a look. Frankie Viola, Frank Viola, he is one of my triplicates I need. So, so far so good. Frank Viola uh, was a key component to the Twins winning the World Series in 1987. Um, he had a pretty good year, though not as spectacular as some of the other years that he had. If I remember right, I think his record was like 16 and 13. Um, so he was a league leader in wins um, and ERA. Uh, let's take a look and see. ERA, 290. Oh, I got to remember, he was 17 and 10. And in the year in, in American League, you had to have a lot of wins to be in a league leader. So he was fifth in game started, seventh in strikeouts, only eighth in victories with 17. Over in the National League, that would have get, gotten him pretty pretty high up on the league leaderboard and then 10th in innings. Uh, Frankie V eventually moved on to the Mets and then the Red Sox to end out his career. Pretty good lefty. Next up, we have Tim Wallach, who is another triplicate we need. So that's, that's looking pretty good. Tim Wallach was one of my favorite non-Cardinal baseball players uh, in the 80s. Uh, he spent the majority of his career with the Expos playing third base, eventually moved over to the first base side of the Diamond, uh, finished out with the Dodgers. He had a couple of sons that played uh, baseball, and I think one of them made it to the major leagues. Uh, Wallach was a league leader, if I remember right, in doubles, RBI, and runs, I think. So uh, he was first in doubles, first in game-winning RBI, and second in RBI, seventh in hits, and tenth in slugging percentage. So I didn't get the runs part uh, of it. I guess my memory isn't very good at the 87 season, and my memory is not very good when, I'm, when I've got triplicates. And I should be remembering uh, these league leaders as I get through the third time and the fourth time around with some of these cards. Oh, well. I'm getting old in my advanced age, so trying to remember all this uh, data sometimes is hard to do. All right, Dave Rigetti is next. He's another triplicate that I need. Uh, this one's going to be easy. Rigetti was a, a league leader in saves. I believe he was first in saves. I want to say, I don't think he got close uh, to, I don't think he got to 40, but I think he got pretty close to 40. Oh, he was second, see? Tied with 31 saves. Third in games finished with 54 and ninth in games with 60. Uh, he's a couple of years off of, uh, I think it was 86, or maybe it was 85. No, it was 86, where he set the American League record for saves in a year. I think with 36. Yeah, that's obviously been blown out of the water in the modern era. Fernando Valenzuela is next. Rubber arm himself until that rubber arm completely fell off. Uh, he was a pitcher in uh, the 80s for the Dodgers that gained a lot of notoriety. When he came up in 1980, I believe, he, uh, Fernando Mania was well uh, heard of throughout the, the National League. Um, was a key starter along with Oral Hershiser in their 81 run to a World Series victory, 85 playoffs, um, 88 playoffs. Uh, Fernando was able to do a lot of that. I believe he was a league leader in strikeouts and wins. Uh, strikeouts, he was fourth, uh, complete games first, innings third, eighth in victories, and eighth in games started. Uh, he threw a lot of 250 plus innings. Lasorda didn't really trust his um, bullpen that much, and I think players like Valenzuela and Hershiser kind of suffered a little bit from that. Mike Schmidt is our next one. Good. Looks like another pack of seven triplicates. Uh, Mike Schmidt, um, 
who I think he was the best National League offensive player in the 80s. Won, if I remember right, three MVP awards. Uh, led the league in home runs and RBI a number of times. Um, was with the Phillies when they went to the World Series in 80 and won it. And then in 83 when they lost to the Orioles. Uh, Schmidt was a league leader in home run and RBI. Um, RBI was third with 113. There are quite a few players that were up in the 30s and the 40s. So Schmidt finished sixth in home run. I think he was one off of being in the top five. Uh, seventh in slugging percentage and eighth in walks. Perennial all-star and slugger Mike Schmidt. I, I remember when he retired in 1989, got about a month or two into the season, and then hung it up abruptly. Uh, his, in his press conference, he just says, I can't play it at the high level I expect, and so for that, I'm going to hang it up instead of slugging it out through the rest of the year. So props to Mike Schmidt. Oral Hershiser, if I remember right, yeah, in just about every pack when we had Fernando V, we also got Oral Hershiser, the Bulldog. Great player for the Dodgers in the 80s, was you know key to their 85 playoff run, 88. Uh, I think in my last time focusing on Hershiser, he almost was traded to the Rangers for Jim Sundberg, even before his career got started because the, the Dodgers just didn't think he was going to be that high of a prospect and pan out. Well, they were wrong. Uh, Hershiser racked together a great career with over 200 wins. Maybe a borderline Hall of Famer. I think he may get voted in by the Veterans Committee. Uh, you know, he was a great pitcher in the 80s and the early 90s. You know, ended out his career with the Indians. Um, I, I think he's a little underrated. Uh, and it wouldn't surprise me to see him get into the Hall of Fame. He was a league leader in strikeouts, I believe, victories and ERA. Third in ERA, third in victories, and fourth in strikeouts. Tied Fernando with 190 in, in 87. He was first in innings, third in complete games, and fourth in games started. Final card is George Bell. So, yep, we'll be down to 23 cards for that third set, looks like. Uh, George Bell was an MVP in 1987, led the league in home runs, and I think he may have led in RBI. Great offensive player. Um, after spending the vast majority of the 80s with the Blue Jays, kind of fell out of favor with ownership was uh, signed with the Cubs as a free agent. And then his last year or two, I think, was with the White Sox. Um, great power slugger. Uh, he started out his career as Jorge Bell with a J and then eventually changed it to George, more English-styled spelling. George Bell seems like a pretty Americanized name, but I believe he was from the Dominican Republic. Um, like I said, Bell is a league leader in home run and RBI. So first in RBI, second in runs, second in home runs, and fifth in game-winning RBI. I forgot Mark McGuire led the league with 49 home runs that year, so Bell was second. Uh, anyway, you know, the card I had spotlight out of this since I've spotlighted a couple of these. But, um, you know, I'm going to go with uh, Frank Viola. Oh, Frank Viola was a thorn on my side. Uh, you know, especially because the Twins won the World Series in 87. Viola had a lights-out game in Game 1 and Game 7. Uh, game 4, the Cardinals got to him. It's one of the very few World Series where the home team won uh, their games. So the Twins had a home field advantage. They won Games 1 and 2, 6 and 7. Cardinals won 3, 4, and 5. Um, I really thought the Cardinals were going to win it in Game 6. They were in the lead. John Tudor's pitching. Ken Herbert came up to the plate, I think, in the sixth inning, hit a grand slam, and that was it. After that, after living through the 85 debacle when the Cardinals lost in seven games, I thought, you know what, they're going to lose in Game 7, and they did. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like it, please subscribe and share. Also, share with me in the comments what your favorite card was or best card out of the pack. Until next time when I'm back to crack the next pack of my 1988 Tops Mini Leaders in the quest to complete set number three.